Okay, so as you can see, I kept working and I filled in those areas. And right now it looks like a paint by number, which, you know, I'm sure you expected. And that is when we wanna start blending. Now you'll notice that I did not do the talons. I guess that's what you call them on a macaw or a parrot. I left them blank for right now because what I wanna blend is the branch and some of the shadows that are created from his talons. Everything else in the area that I've painted is gonna be blended. This is when I like to use this photo reference as a visual guide and look and see what I actually blended here. This part of this branch has been shaded. I did blend the shadow just along this area. I didn't take it all the way up in here because you don't wanna take the shadow too far or you've kind of blended it into the branch, which means it's no longer really a shadow. Same with this side. I limited where that shadow was blended. So I'm gonna to continue to do the same here. Now, we also wanna consider that a branch is rounded. And that is why along the bottom, the shadow is deeper, as you can see here. So when I blend this shadow here, I'm gonna take it up a little bit but I'm going to maintain a lot of depth there. Along the top, it's a little deeper here, and there's a lot of shading and dimension here once we get to where his body is behind this branch. You'll notice there's going to be some depth, and that's going to create that dimension. Now, you'll notice a little bit of darkness here. It may look very dark and harsh now, but it's going to create that roundedness once I blend this out better. This depth is going to blend out some, but that's gonna create the look of a line that is actually in the branch itself. So all of these things, even though when you look at it here on a paint by number version, that visual paint by number where everything is kind of blocked, it almost looks like color blocking, as we start to blend and mix these colors together and they start to really become one, you will see a before and after almost of how this starts to take literal shape into a rounded branch. And then it starts to look like this. This is where you have to ascertain and distinguish what you need to blend. And so that's what I wanna show you now is how I'm going to determine what gets blended and what does not based on the photo reference that I've supplied you. Everything I've given you in the kit has a rhyme and a reason, just like as I explained in the introduction to the kits video, which I hope you watched before you jumped into the tutorial. That's how I explained kind of the method to my madness when I created the kits. So I'm gonna start with the tiny little brush that I've included in the kit and I'm gonna get water on it. And when I dip in water, I'm barely dipping into it. And we're gonna start commingling our colors together on the edges. If I get too much water and I get this little puddle, I'm gonna take it to my paper towel and tap it off just to get that little bit of excess off. And I'm gonna take it along these edges And just put it down because some of this paint dried yesterday because I actually didn't have time to come back right away. But you'll notice it just starts to immediately soften. This is not like acrylic paints. Aren't y'all happy? Hmm. And I'm going to kind of hold it more flat than usual and just so I can push it and use just little tiny motions. 
to blend those together. Exactly how I showed you earlier. Now a lot of this I will time lapse because I feel like repetition is kind of the key to, you know, remembering how to do something and for you to practice with me. So let's go into time lapse and start to blend. back a little depth right there to the center but it's not going to stay in the center as long as it's wet now when you use the heat tool you want to keep it back four or five inches away from your paper and keep it moving and that way it doesn't burn your paper now what i noticed is as that dried that this needs to be a lighter tint of that color so i'm going to take water only and remove by lifting some of the pigment away, but I don't want to overwork my paper too much. Then I'm going to just soften some of this in here and remove some of this around the area where it should have some depth. And then I'm gonna leave it alone and I'm gonna come back to it in a little bit after I've worked in the surrounding areas in this darkness Let's go back into time lapse.
Okay, so I'm gonna go back to explaining what I'm doing. And first of all, before I go any further, I'm taking the heat tool because I like the way this is looking right here in this area. I can continue to work on that more later, but for right now, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. The thing about watercolor is I like the modeled look. After I finish this whole branch, I can go back and kind of work and blend some more areas if I want to, but right now I'm kind of liking this area the way I have it. What I was doing is working in a way that I hadn't really explained, so I wanted to come back and be explaining this process a little bit to you. So I picked up the larger paintbrush. This is the four that's in the kit. I'm going over this area here and I started to blend it with just water and they were mixing in together. And then I realized, okay, I need to stop because I wasn't doing the small circular motions with the smaller brush and I needed to kind of explain because they're all mixing together. And you're probably thinking, whoa, 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 what is she doing? She's, you know, commingling all of that. And some of those colors are disappearing. I didn't want you to have to mix colors in these kits because I knew the minute I told you, oh, you're going to be mixing, you guys were all going to freak out on me and back out. <laughs> you know you, and I know you too. <laughs> when somebody tells me I have to mix colors, I'm immediately like, what? Stop the madness. Even though I know I can, does not mean I want to. But mixing with watercolors is totally different than mixing with acrylics. So although this is not exactly mixing, it is commingling, okay? And there's gonna be a couple of ways we can do this. I can do it either by already having my paints on my paint by number and doing it here, or I can use them on my silicone mat and kind of mix them there. So I'm gonna show you both ways really quickly because this is really the fastest and most effective way to do it. And I just didn't want to bring that to you first because I was afraid I would scare you off. So let's talk about this really quickly and let me walk you through it. There were several different areas here with the number eight, the number nine, the 12, and this larger area is the 13. Let's look at our large digital swatch here so I can show you. 12 is the darker version of 13. So these two are a family and then eight and nine are a family. And so that is what I was working with here. But in order to make them look cohesive, I kind of just was swiping them a little bit together and making them look like one unit, which is what I was doing here as well. And I was leaving some depth by adding back some of the darker eight which is this darkest warm brown here as it was drying some. So let's go back here and I dried it with the heat tool to set it in place, but I wasn't really finished. I just wanted to kind of show you. And I'm actually liking the way it looks right now. I mean, honestly, I could stop there, but let's just say I want to add back a little bit of definition maybe, or blend out some of this edge here. And this brush picks up a lot of water, so I'm gonna take off some of that water real quick. Just pick up, I just want a tiny bit of water here. And because this was number 12, and this is 13, I'm actually going to just put down some water there, and I'm picking up 12, which is our darkest of the two of 12 and 13. And I'm gonna let it just kind of run into 13 because they're a family of browns. And if I want to get a little water on the brush, let's tap off some excess, I can take it down into 13, which is this lighter right in here, and let it just run down in here from what I had just put up in here in this area. Now it's going to remove a lot of the darkness where I put the original amount of paint just now. And that is why we don't paint it this way to begin with when we do our paint by number. But I can add back some depth if I want. And as long as I don't really add a lot more water, it's gonna stay where I put it. But let's just add a little bit more water so that it blends into number 13 a little more like it is right there kind of we're just going to pull it down in there a little bit 
and then we're just going to let it soften itself down in there. It might look a little different than my photo, but I don't care. As long as I like the way it looks here, it's fine. Now, in this area on my reference guide, that's actually number eight. And eight is a dark, warm brown, which is fabulous. And I want it to be kind of blending into number 12 over here, which is in this area. Yeah, I've got the eight on my brush. I don't care. I'm okay with that, but I'm going to mingle them together. I'm going back into to 12, which is the cooler brown. I'm going to add a little depth there. And you know what I'm doing right now? I'm mixing paints. Oh my God, you didn't even know it. You didn't see me doing it, did you? Okay, so I'm putting down some of the 12 just to make it a little bit more, you know, a little more depth there with it. And then I'm gonna go back into my water just a little bit, just to clean it off, because I don't want to contaminate my number eight here. And I could be doing this on my palette if I need to. And I'm gonna go in here with a little bit of the eight. And I'm still looking at my reference guide. You guys can't see me right now, but kind of just adding a little bit of the eight, eight right up here. And even though it's not exactly what my reference guide says, my reference guide is a reference. It doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm going to drop my paintbrush a little bit into the water, get a tiny bit of water so I can lighten this up. And I'm just going to play a little bit, making this look like whatever I want it to look like. And then I'm taking a lot more of that off. And then because this lighter amount up here is 46, which is my really creamy colored paint down here. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of that. Now, once I do this, if I get it wet, it's going to start to run from this darkness up into that a little bit. And I'm going to let it do it. And then I'm going to start pulling it down in here a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of let it do its thing. So I'm pulling it all into 13 by just adding a little bit of water. But this is what's cool about watercolor is that you, you just let it migrate. <laughs> and I'm going to pull eight over just a little bit. Just so that there's no like real harsh stop and go lines. And you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're you're not following this PBN right now. What are you doing, lady? I am doing what I want to do with my own paint by number. But I'm blending the way I kind of want to do my blending. But I'm just showing you a way that you can mix your colors without actually officially mixing colors. Because watercolors are so easy to do that with. What happens if I don't like that this darker brown got up too much in here? I take a clean, dry brush and I just wipe out that darkness and it's gone. I can come back in here with this paint and start blending those in and it's going to soften that line. But in that way, it doesn't look like a harsh line right there because I don't want that line. With watercolor, it's all about water control. And if you don't control the amount of water you're using, then you don't get the look that you want to achieve. So I'm gonna go back in here with a light bit of 46 and I'm pulling up the darkness. And the reason that other darkness is running into 46 is because it's still wet but I want them to start to blend. Now, if I work it too much, you know, I'm gonna start losing the look that I have. So before I do anything else, let me kind of freeze what I have here or let me heat what I have. That way I can go back with just some water, make sure I don't have too much darkness in here, but I want it to blend. There we go. 
Okay, so let me just add back just a teeny bit of the warmer brown right here. I'm just kind of tapping it in there. Let's go in with a little bit of this number 12. I just want it to be a little bit darker there. And let's start kind of mixing them together a little bit. It's okay to co-mingle. We're not social distancing as much anymore. And then, of course, I put them down and then I start to remove them with water. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry. Then we're gonna come back and finish this area and the rest of this. Okay, so now that this area is dry, I'm gonna go in here and just soften up the line to where it doesn't look like there's a beginning and an end. It's like, let's let it dry so that we can get it wet again. <laughs> doesn't make sense, does it? Have y'all met me? <laughs> I don't want it too dark up in there because that's where light is hitting. So when there's light, there's a highlight, right? So the top of the log would have a highlight, which is why that lightest color was actually there to begin with. I also don't want that harsh like line of demarcation up there either. Now where his body is, is gonna be a little more darkness. So we're just gonna get that little line softened out and we're gonna move on to a different area. Okay, so let's get in here where the green part is. And it's, you know, we're going from green to brown. And so it's like, what in the world we do here? And I'm just gonna do the same thing. I am using the small brush still, laying it kind of on its side. I'm doing the original method for the moment. rinse my brush and then I'm going to go in with a larger brush taking off the excess water and then just going to kind of start moving it back and forth between number 13 which is this lighter brown and number 16 which is this really pretty green and I can even come in here with some of this darker brown. And let them all just kind of start pulling in together a little bit, pushing and moving them around. Exactly how we did all the other areas, really. I'm not trying to get a lot of green down in here. But it's not going to matter if I get a little bit. It's my painting, right? It's gonna be your painting. So it's not like there's not gonna be reflections from leaves or trees that are gonna cause some green to be in other areas. So even though this is a, diff a different green up in here, I'm just using what's on my brush, which is a different hue of green. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. This is what I mean by you do you boo boo, right? You 
squeeze in a little bit more water. Kind of tapping and moving. This is so relaxing, you guys. And just let it happen. That is what watercolors are all about. Is watching them move with the water. I'm just going to soften these lines where they meet. And I'm going to clean the brush a little bit, but I'm picking up more water. And here where 13 is, in this line between 16 and 13, I'm going to add some more water. And then I'm going to pick up number 13. I don't want it dark. I'm going to just tap it in here and let it start to flow into number 16 on its own. And again, we're mixing colors indirectly. Scary, isn't it? <laughs> So not scary. Okay, I'm gonna rinse the brush. Not really too worried about getting everything out of it. I'm gonna add a little water to this number eight in my palette. And that's where number 16 is. I'm gonna add enough water to pick up some pigment, but I'm gonna tap off a lot of the excess. I don't want it to be too dark. And so I can start bringing it in here because right in here it goes from 16 to 18 which is a very light tint of number eight paint so i'm going from the darkest of number eight paint into a very light tint of it so i don't need a lot of pigment but I'm just gonna let them start flowing together here. I've got some brown in it, it's fine. Looks kinda like, ugh, right now. It's muddy paint, literally, but it's okay because when it dries, it's kinda gonna have a, a look of watercolor. Now, if I wanna pull out some of that depth, and that darkness, I'm just gonna take a clean paintbrush, cleanish, and it's what we call a thirsty brush, which means I've got everything out of it, but a little bit of water. And I'm just gonna pull back some of the pigment. Put that where it came from, or so help me. And I just can move it around a little bit. So it's not quite as dark in here. Then I'm gonna clean my brush again. So it's fairly clean. And then I'm gonna softly start moving it into this green here, which was number 30. And on our palette, it's number three up here. I'll add some water to this color in case I need to get any of that. Right now, I'm not gonna get any of that. I'm just gonna use what's on my, pick my number. And I'm gonna pull it. And just with gentle motions allow these to blend together and if I feel like it's getting too dark up in here this light space I'm gonna take it back put it back where it belongs and clean the brush and just get some water and you just see it's just kind of this repetitive motion now, I'm gonna start picking up some of the green and removing it from the brush. Going back with a clean brush. Picking up some of the green. And from here, I just want it to be more of the browns and only the browns. So if I see any greens down in here, I can leave them or I can just push them back up here a little bit and let the browns just move in together and blend out together. 
this is nature. Nature's got its own way of doing things. So there's no rhyme or reason to how it looks. So right now I'm actually pretty happy with the way this is blended. I'm gonna make sure I don't have any harsh or defined lines here. I'm just gonna hit it one more time and I'm gonna take some of that green actually and leave it right up in there. And the only thing I still have to do on this side is this little open lit area here, which is just a kind of a highlight, a little a little lighter section of our branch. Taking some water. And I am just going to fill it with the paint that is on the painting, the 13. And I'm just going to kind of pull it into number 46 here. And I'm not pulling it into our purple colors because again, that was our shadow that was created. And I'm gonna just continue it around, maintaining our shadow. And then if I feel like it's a little too dark, I can come back and pull up a little bit of it. I don't wanna define the shape too much. I'm just gonna pull up some of that. And then down here where we have the dark colors again, and we want to make sure we are continuing to keep where the log has its definition at the base and its depth. We're just gonna kind of bring these together like we did at the top. Not messing with this area here. I'm just gonna wet these a little bit and tap them. I don't want these to blend out. I wanna maintain the depth. Basically, I wanna maintain the shape. So I'm just gonna tap them to get them a little bit wet right on the lines to keep the color in that area. Just have some water on the brush using what I have on the brush and I'm just tapping it, letting it run up in there a little bit, kind of doing its own thing. And if it gets too out of control, I'm gonna take a tiny bit of water, dip it into this color here, which was eight, that warm brown. And I wanna put a little bit more of that back because I really do love the warm brown. If there's too much water here, you know it'll start to run again, but I definitely want to maintain some of that right there. And I'm gonna mix it with the number 12 that was here, so it just kind of blends itself together. I like that right there. And I'm gonna continue to stay in this area. I go ahead and pick up some of this number eight to maintain that darkness because eight is mixing into nine right here, which they're in the same family. So I can keep the darkness of eight, work into a little bit of number nine. get this paint wet so get a little dot more of water but I'm gonna tap off some excess water and then just let them play by dragging it a little bit that way and then I'm going to continue by getting a little more water and tapping off excess letting it run into number 12. And I'm not gonna blend them, I'm just gonna let them 
do their own thing with the water for right now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull into number 10 right here, which is a really orangey color by tapping and softening with these as well. While my brush has still got those colors on it, To me, blending is where the magic happens in these kits, and you don't have to do it. I don't want you feeling like you're intimidated by it. I mean, but it is, to me, this is a lot more fun blending these than it is any other kits, in my opinion, of course, because watercolors are just so magical to watch mixed together. All right, so I'm gonna let that warm orangey color mix in with these a little bit. Now, what I like to do, and I don't know if you've noticed, but I like to pull the lighter color sometimes into the darker color, like for example, with this orangey color, because it is lighter and let me clean my brush here so I can show you I'm going into number 10 and we'll pick up a little bit of this paint we're gonna pull it into the darker colors and then start to mix them And that way we don't lose that little bit of that warm orangey brown. And then we can push it back up in there. Go in here with number nine. You'll notice I'm all, well, you can't really see me, but I'm always looking at the reference guide and kind of just back and forth and if I get the wrong color in the wrong place I don't get too worried about that unless it's like a orange where maybe a light color is supposed to go I'm gonna use this well even though it may look a little dirty it is not as stained and we're gonna mix our colors in order to make this land a little bit better and for this I'm gonna go in with the larger brush and I'm going to put number 46, which is the lighter of the two colors. I'm gonna put a little bit on my palette right here. And because I don't want to contaminate my watercolors for this kit, I'm gonna rinse the brush. And then I'm gonna go in with 13, which is number six in our palette. And it is the lighter of the two here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here. I'm gonna use water to kind of, to get it where I need it, as far as its tint. And then right in this well, I'm gonna take my brush and mix them together and create a color that is somewhere in between the two of those. Now the beauty of this is that I can create tints of this particular color as well by adding more water to it. And so what I want to do is I'm going to make sure I get some of this off the brush just to make sure I can save as much as I need. I'm going to tap the brush off. I don't want it too wet when I go in here. But this color on my brush should be somewhere in between the lightest color and this color here. So let's go ahead and start overlapping the lines where these two meet with this mixture that I just created. And that's really how easy it is to mix our paints with watercolor. Just gonna put this color over the top where they meet. And if you feel like that color is darker than you want, what are you gonna do? You're gonna add a touch of water to your two colors. And we're gonna lighten it up. We're gonna just make it more of a tint. A tint usually means you've added white to it, but in watercolors, it just means you've added water to it. 
I'm going to take off some of that excess water. But you can see as it starts to dry already that it's actually right in the middle of those two colors. And then I'm just going to keep blending out the line with it. But that is why that silicone mat is so handy. It's, it's not just great for the acrylics because you can peel off the acrylic paint once it dries, but it's also great for this as well. So I'm not trying to get all the way in the center of the lightest color with this mixture, but I'm gonna go around the edge. Now it looks kind of messy at this point, but once I've softened these edges a little bit, And while I have this mixture, I can take it over here as well and go ahead and start softening these lines.
So if you guys want to join me in the next part of working on the green parrot watercolor paint by number, I would love for you to do so. I'm happy that you joined me today and I really appreciate it. I hope this has helped you feel a little bit more comfortable if you have purchased the watercolor kits. And if you have not, I hope it makes you feel more comfortable in doing so. I will have the shopping links on melaniebinfo and also you can find these kits and the silicone mat and all the tools that I've used today at MelanieBeesCreativeSupplies.com. I'll have the links below for all of the materials that I used for this video. You guys, thanks as always for joining me. I hope to see you back soon.